every week. I mean, we now in our column that you mentioned that Gary Taubes and I are doing we're on unsettled science, we're going to do, we're do a roundup of nutrition news on every Friday. And like, you know, take your pick of all the terrible articles that come out every single week. Oh, you need to cut back on eggs, you know, <laughs> like just old, outdated, non-scientific, non-evidence-based articles. Oh, this week there's one, pasta is good for your health. I mean, I saw that. funded by the pasta, so some pasta maker. I mean, peop, it's just so bad, the nutrition reporting that is out there. So I think people are constantly getting really what I would call misinformation hashtag um, on nutrition. Yep. Yeah. Well, I have to say Netflix and their documentaries are amazing. I love Netflix documentaries as they pertain to sports. Uh, the, the drive to survive about Formula One is incredible. The one they just did about the World Cup in 2022 is amazing called um, Captains of the World. There's a new rugby one I want to watch. And I love watching them. And every few months, I have to stop watching them because somebody messages me and said, hey, have you watched this latest Netflix documentary that's about the Blue Zones or it's about Cowspiracy or it's about the latest one that just came out, the Twin Study? And I have to watch these. And I hate them. I know exactly what they're going to be. They take away from the things I really want to watch. And again, this latest one is called the Twin Study, a very intriguing type of an idea of a study that was done in Stanford. And they made this into this pretty documentary that's beautiful and well-made and has experts from all over the world and food companies. And it's just, this is what people watch. And it's so enticing that people know after watching this, they know exactly what they need to do and they're misled. And it really, really sucks. Can you tell us a little bit about the Stanford study that this is based on? And and first of all, did you even watch the documentary? Did you have to waste your time with any of it? Um, no, I have Good to for you. I did not. But like you, I like to watch the ones on sports. I what I started the one on Beckham. My son's into soccer, so he's like, watch this, mom. So I'm I'd rather serious. watch that. But um so the I actually I wrote a piece about the study, uh, it's called the vegan twin study that was done at Stanford. And I wrote about that when the study came out. So um, that was in, uh, I did that in mid December. And that was, so the study comes out early December. And the Netflix documentary on the study is all ready to launch, like just weeks later. So what I, it just occurred to me when I just heard about that, I was like, wow, was this study designed to like actually like be a media product? Was it a real study? Because it's a short study. It's only two months long. The lead investigator, Christopher Gardner, he's done longer diet studies, and he knows that you don't get meaningful results in such a short term. Like He knows that. He is hugely influential in the world of nutrition. He currently serves as one of the members of the uh, dietary guideline advisory committee that's advising the US government on what our next guidelines are going to look like. He himself is a vegan and has been he was for decades before he started doing this these kinds of studies, so he came with a bias into this world and I knew all that about him and then I was very just suspicious that they had this Netflix documentary all lined up I mean if it was a genuine study and they didn't know what way it would come out. Maybe they wouldn't want to actually like sell it already to Netflix, but they had. So it couldn't have been a real study in the sense that like they, you know, they already they knew what the outcome was going to be. And I explain in this piece that I wrote that they had kind of cherry picked the outcomes that they were going to look at in terms of cardiovascular health. So they only select LDL cholesterol, which inevitably goes down on a plant based diet because the 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 um, your plant sterols replace cholesterol on the cell walls and that causes your cholesterol to go down. And that just always happens on a plant-based diet. But cardiovascular risk as a whole has to be seen in terms of other things like HDL cholesterol, your triglycerides, and maybe some inflammation markers. Like none of that was covered in the paper, even though you know, they only focus on LDL cholesterol. That's one of the tricks of people who want to make the plant-based diet look best. Anyway, I just there's a lot here that I could talk about, but let me just give you some highlights. So Christopher Gardner's entire center at Stanford is underwritten by Beyond Meat, a fake meat company. 
it was a five-year grant and the whole center is underwritten by this company. What they seek to do is to replace real meat with their fake product. And the way to do that is to convince people that a vegan diet is best. So there's a huge conflict of interest there from the very start, right? And then what else do I find? It turns out the funding, the sole funding for this study is comes from the Vote Foundation, that's V-O-G-T. Vote, turns out, is a, um, Kyle Vote is a member of the so-called Vegan Mafia, um, which is a group of Silicon Valley tycoons who invest in vegan-focused companies. He previously spent north of a million dollars on the 2019 Netflix movie, The Game Changers, which promoted a vegan lifestyle by documenting the accomplishments of vegan athletes. And he also, um, and then he uh, he gave not he gave money not only for this study but to the production company that did the study. So he funded also the filmmakers, and his whole foundation, the Vote Foundation, is uh, exclusively donates to either animal rights causes, other vegan causes. I mean, there it's for vegan advocacy. So is Christopher Gardner doing like vegan advocacy? Well, I discovered that his course where he talks about health, he says he doesn't even mention health. He says what he's he's not really interested in diet and health and health outcomes. Even he's in the medical school, right? People go to the medical school to learn about personal health. But he, but what Gardner's interested in are labor rights issues around raising meat. He's interested in the saving the environment. He's interested in animal rights issues. Those are the issues that motivate him, which you know would be fine if uh, he were in the school of sociology, but he's in the school of medicine and his job is to try to figure out how to help people understand how they can be healthier. So he's not even interested in the question really of health. He's just using that, it seems sort of like a fig leaf for his other passionate social justice issues that clearly motivate him. And he's, he talks about it, you know, very openly. And then if you look at his center, you know, what they're doing is not really science. They're doing grants for advocacy. Like there's, there's grants on like trying to persuade all of Stanford doctors to offer a vegan diet, to try to make the vegan diet the default at Stanford events. So trying to influence event managers a one unit course on all the issues on trying to convince Stanford students that veganism is best. I mean, he is involved. I think it's very clear he is involved in advocacy. And his advocacy includes <clears throat> what's the best kind of advocacy nowadays is films, you know, you learn a lot more by watching a documentary It just goes straight into your heart all those stories and seeing all those pictures, you know, rather than like reading some dry fact sheet. So he knows that his funders know that so he's figured out i'll do you know it seems very likely the thought process here was let's do this study twins what is more exciting and fun and you know as he just said a riot to work with than twins you know they make good tv you know there's a reason that two of shakespeare's plays are based on twins like they're they're a good topic so they do a like a great twin study short as possible to get anything out of it and make a movie about it and convince people like this is you know the vegan diet is best for health and well that way we'll move people towards you know christopher gardner and his funders vision of of everybody moving on to, towards a plant-based diet so you know you only have to dig a little bit to find this and i think I think one of the really striking things for me, uh, and this is also in my piece, but you know, the moment that the moment that you, that it's found that people on expert panels are say paid off by this happened actually on a expert panel for the government on alcohol. It turned out that two of the members had ties to the alcohol or the you know the liquor industry. They were yanked off immediately and you see all these nutrition experts saying oh it's so outrageous such a conflict of interest how can anybody tolerate that but when it comes to christopher gardner's obvious conflict of interest which is that he is a vegan advocate for ideological reasons nowhere i even had a wall street journal uh reporter call me and say oh well, let's talk about this not nothing published 